Welcome to another adventure with members of the Florida Power Book Club. This is Stu Jones, and we have got a lot to celebrate as we move into 2018 with our first event, the Winter Poker Run to the Florida Keys. And this is one that we have done many, many times. I want to say this is probably the 16th annual uh, version of this event. And it always changes just a little bit as far as the destination, but it's pretty much always going to be to the Florida Keys. And we are kicking things off as we always have now for well over a year at this fabulous Hullover Marine Center who have done a great job of taking care of my 38-foot cigarette, which just arrived on the scene only really just days before this uh, as we prepared the boat for the run. This will be the first poker run that we've done with this uh, old-style, old-school 2000 model year 38 foot cigarette top gun and you saw in that earlier segment we did have a couple days of preparation getting it ready for the run and there's going to be a lot of other cigarettes on this event uh starting with this 42x sal olivia from new york and a good variety of boats really as you're about to see because well let's face it the florida powerboat club is kind of all over the map now in terms of the kind of boats that we have because we have boaters who like different things some like the fast cats some like the big center consoles but overall our format with the club has always been to accommodate every type of boat why don't we bring this one with us too <laughs> obviously a lot of yachts and a lot of boats in this area of town because we're in the middle of january here in north miami and this is probably about the only place that you can go boating anywhere in the country this time of year and that's why we love doing the winter poker run some high performance hardware as we uh, check in on the docks here and of course the mandatory captain's meeting a very casual format uh, for the winter poker run because we do have fewer teams uh, we don't have to have the structured captain's meeting the night before uh, so we just do a dockside here at Hallover Marine Center and we actually uh, allowed a lot of the boats that just rendezvoused with us to, to tie up here and uh, wander up have some coffee and bagels and it's uh, it really works out fine it's casual but it's important to have this because it allows us to talk about uh, the trip today where we're going talk about safety issues uh, talk about the course and in some cases uh, many of these members are new so we get a chance to introduce uh, some of the newcomers to our club membership well we bid farewell to Tracy who set up the breakfast for us and uh, jumped into the Top Gun now today on board uh, the 38 cigarette is going to be my son Tyler we only had to take him out of school for one day Friday and Jackie and Maxwell are going to drive down and meet us in Key Largo with uh, the rest of the group later today David Steele on board shooting video and uh, a new friend, Husnu Silan, there he is uh, on the left. Uh, he is a sponsor. We met him at a motorsports rally back in December. He paid a couple thousand dollars to join FPC for a day uh, doing a poker run. So thanks to Husnu for that generous contribution uh, which went to military families. And as a result, he gets to join the Florida Powerball Club on this very cool adventure as we head out here on this beautiful Friday morning in January. But I can tell you that Matt Borsina and his crew all the way from New York with this 28-foot uh, skater, they're pretty jazzed up about this trip because they came all the way from New York. It's the middle of January. It's freezing cold back at home. So they're just happy to be here in beautiful South Florida. Altogether, 16 teams registered for this run. Out of the 16, there's seven that are from Northern Climates uh, that have come down just for the weekend. So glad you guys could make it down. And if nothing else, that shows your dedication uh, to the Florida boating lifestyle and just how important it is to you. Now, by now, you're looking at all these images for anyone who has not uh, attended this event, and you're wondering, where did all these bridges come from? Well, uh, we couldn't go offshore. The winds were really blowing hard today, and as we went over in the captain's meeting, uh, seas out there were four to six, uh, even bigger. So rather than go offshore through Hallover Inlet, uh, we stayed on the inshore route, uh, intracoastal. There are two ways to go from North Miami down to Miami, and we showed everybody a new route, which is not the main ICW. It's more along the residential corridor that is a little bit further to the east than the main intracoastal. And it's a great way to go because there's, there's fewer idle zones, and it's very scenic. There's a lot of nice homes. Uh, indeed, you do have a lot of these bridges to go through, which you have to slow down for, but you slow down for the bridge, you idle through it, and you're back up on plane in a matter of seconds. And I think for many people, it was kind of like, hey, this is cool. Never did this one before. And anyone who does uh, keep their boat up at Hallover Inlet, uh, I would highly advise that they know this route because 
you know, on any given day, you could have rough seas offshore, and you don't want to go out and get beat up and uh, get everybody wet or bounce your boat around and beat stuff up. This is a trip that you need to know, so it's good to have it marked in your GPS. Uh, and it is important to follow it closely because you can see in this shot off in the distance, that's nothing but a big sandbar. So if you come out of that 79th Street Bridge and don't turn your boat to port and hug the eastern shoreline and you try to go over that sandbar, you're going to get in trouble real fast. Darius Ceriza running alongside my cigarette in his 38-foot Donzi got some big power in this boat. Uh, they're originally 700s all jacked up. I think he's running about 900 horsepower aside. Throwing a big rooster tail and uh, got his buddy Alex on board, uh, his sponsor from Monkey in Paradise Vodka. So these guys are pumped up and ready for a day of boating fun. You can see in this shot uh, that hard turn to port at that green marker that lines you up for the Julia Tuttle Causeway and uh, that's why it's critical to sort of space things out uh, let the pace boat get ahead and uh, chart the course and everybody just kind of chill back and do a lot of spacing between the boats because there are a lot of sudden turns that you're really not ready for if you're just kind of following the boat and not checking out your GPS you might not be ready for it and the same is true of all of the uh, markings and signs you know you really don't see the signs until you're right up on them and for somebody who doesn't have local knowledge uh, like this area right here near Sunset Harbor and coming up on the Venetian Causeway it can be really tricky because you're not certain if you can keep on plane or you should be off plane so you have to sort of rely on local knowledge and that's what our pace boat is for to get us through these waterways now we're going through the Venetian Causeway look at the low clearance on this bridge now Keep in mind that some of the center consoles, or most of them really, are not going to make it through this bridge, which is only about maybe 9 foot or 8 foot. Uh, so you have to get the bridge tender to open the bridge if you want to go through here. Or you can just continue on further to the west, and about 3 miles further down, you can pass through the main Venetian Causeway Bridge, which is at least 20 foot of clearance, so most boats are going to make it freely through there back up to speed as we make our way past the Miami Beach Marina and South Beach there's government cut and if you look really closely there's a lot of white water out there today so we're glad that we made this choice to stay inside but we're pretty much going to stay on plane from this point on because we're now moving into the port of Miami but we're taking the south side of the port that's the uh, where the commercial ships are not the cruise ships but the big ships and the cranes and you guys remember you can always go fast through here and we highly advise you to take it easy and pay attention to the waterway because there are barges and tugs and big ships always negotiating these waters and a lot of traffic so you have to be careful and uh, make sure you give everyone a lot of berth and a lot of room but more importantly be ready for those big rollers that you don't see because some of these tugs and some of these big commercial boats will throw a four or five foot wake and you won't see it until the last minute next thing you know you're launching the boat and we know that these tours are getting their money's worth on the Thriller boat, uh, power boat ride that they take out regularly. <laughs> They're very happy to see this poker run going through here because that's what they came to see. They're in Miami, they want to see power boats, and they just got their money's worth today.
And this is a critical turn that we make now, uh, crossing over uh, the Bay Waters here, heading towards Virginia Key. Uh, that's the site of the Miami Boat Show that we're coming up to. But this is a critical turn because this brings us in good water across what is otherwise a very shallow shoal area. And as we close in on the Rickenbacker Causeway, we know that's gonna be our final slow speed zone uh, because that's our gateway to Biscayne Bay. We're gonna be pretty much able to open up the throttles and run south all the way to Key Largo. But we do have one more stop uh, after we pass through Rickenbacker and we say goodbye to Miami skyline in the background and the cruise ships you see there. We're gonna stop in at Grove Harbor Marina because we've got a few more boats at Grove Harbor who are waiting to join us for the start of the run. Uh, so this is kind of a customary tradition now where we leave out of um, North Miami, make our way down to Miami, stop into Grove Harbor, pick up a few more boats, and then get out into the Bay Waters and turn and head south. Okay, so it was just a hop, skip, and a jump from uh, Rickenbacker Causeway to the entrance of Grove Harbor Marina here. Uh, in your charts, it's called the Seaplane Channel. And a lot of people mistakenly will go in the Dinner Key Channel and end up in the wrong place. But this channel is right alongside. It's actually to the north of Dinner Key Channel, and it's a little bit shorter by maybe a quarter of a mile. So that's how you find it. Meanwhile, let's say hi to Rocco and the boys all the way from New Hampshire. Enjoying the first poker run with Rocco's new 52-foot skater with Mercury Racing 1350s. What a beautiful ride. And it's also time to say farewell to the Cigarette Top Gun, which we've enjoyed now for about an hour. <laughs> and uh, as my buddy Husnu and uh, Tyler uh, unload the cigarette and get on board with Joe Potavano and his 42 Mystic. And why are we doing that? Well, the cigarette choked right here at the docks. Uh, had a kill switch fail. Uh, we could not get to the bottom of it and uh, we had to leave the boat tied up here at Grove Harbor Marina but the guys were great they said no problem Stu just sign here and we'll take care of it and that's what they did they lifted the boat out and put it on a work rack and uh, it was time to jump on with somebody else so that's how this club runs and uh, I want to thank Joe Potavano and his crew for rolling out the red carpet because they were right there on the dock when we got pulled in and they said you know what uh, come on on board with us we got lots of room let's go have fun so meanwhile, we cut everybody else loose because we would have sat around for probably half an hour as we uh, did all this staging. And I decided that it was just wise to let everybody head on. So while the rest of the boats uh, took a heading for Key Largo to the lunch stop, we got loaded up here at Grove Harbor Marina uh, with Joe Potavano and his crew. And we're just going to take our own trek down here from Grove Harbor and put it on cruise control in Biscayne Bay. A little bit bumpy out there, but we'll enjoy the ride. And in just a matter of time, we'll be back with the rest of our boating friends. We're going to break things off here and uh, call this segment one of our feature coverage of the Winter Poker Run to the Florida Keys, our first event for the FPC 2018 season. This is Stu Jones, and when we come back, we'll have plenty of highlights from part two, where we join with our friends in Key Largo for lunch at the landmark Sundowners on the waterfront. Then we're going to do a poker card on the Marvin Adams Cut in Key Largo. First time we've ever done that. Later on, we all rendezvous for our very first time at the all-new Playa Larga Resort. In fact, it was the first boating group that's ever visited there, and we were all very happy with the outcome. We'll be back there very soon. A fantastic weekend in the middle of January with members of the Florida Powerboat Club. This is Stu Jones. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check us out online at flpowerboat.com. I do welcome your comments. Please send them via email. Here's our social media page. Please follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And be sure to subscribe to Florida Powerboat Club so you get all the reminders when a new episode releases. Thanks for watching. See you next time.